Today I wanted to talk to you about the new MacBook Pro lineup. Yes, about a couple of weeks ago, Apple introduced new 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pros. The 13 inches now sport quad core processors. Apple has released hexacore chips on the 15 inch MacBook Pros. This is quite a comeback for a company that has consistently delayed releasing the latest generation Intel Core chips. Does this mean that you should buy these devices though? That's a question that I cannot answer in this video because I haven't had the chance to try one for myself, but I can give you my first thoughts. Of course, we cannot talk about these new MacBook Pros without addressing the keyboard situation. Apple has been under serious hot water because of their uh, malfunctional butterfly switch keyboards. Apple still uses butterfly switch in these new laptops. Thankfully, Apple has apparently put a layer of silicone underneath every single key. This silicone is there to protect each key from dust and debris. Whether or not this is a reliable method remains to be seen. As of right now, Apple has addressed the malfunctional keyboard situation. Let's first look at the 13-inch MacBook Pro lineup currently. The 13-inch MacBook Pro lineup remains unchanged in its base models. The base models are 128 gigabytes and 256 gigabytes of storage respectively. They come in at 8 gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM. They also have your standard Retina display. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports and that is it. It starts at $1,299. If you choose the 256 gigabyte version, you will have to pay $1,000. $1,499. These are dual core 7th generation i5 chips, meaning the last generation i5 chips at this premium price. I'm still very disappointed at Apple for not upgrading these laptops, and I hope they do so ASAP. With that said, these are the new upgraded high performance versions of the MacBook Pro. As you can see, it starts off at $1,799. For that price, you get a 2.3 gigahertz quad core 8th generation core i5 processor, turbo boost up to 3.8 gigahertz, Intel Iris Plus integrated graphics, eight gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, and a retina display now featuring True Tone technology, which is something found only in iPhones up until now. You get four Thunderbolt 3 ports. The 15-inch MacBook Pros get a little bit more interesting. All of these are Touch Bar and Touch ID devices. They come with very powerful hexa-core processors as standard. The base model is a 2.2 gigahertz Core i7 model that is a hexa-core 8th generation processor. It turbo boosts up to 4.1 gigahertz. It's got an AMD Radeon Pro 556X with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. This is not integrated graphics. This is discrete graphics. 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz of DDR5 for memory as standard, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, a retina display with True Tone, and everything else that the high performance 13 inch MacBook Pro have. This configuration costs $2,399. You can configure the 15 inch, you can choose between a stock Core i7 processor or a Core i9 chip clocked at 2.9 gigahertz also hexacore, and you can finally get up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. You can also get up to four terabytes of SSD storage. Wait just a minute, let's look at that price. $6,699. Most of this is coming from the storage, and if I were to go back down to 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, maybe just deal with an external hard drive or whatnot, my price would be a more reasonable $3,499. Still, that's, that's insane. I mean, for a pro laptop, you have to pay that amount of money? That's quite a bit of money. So my thoughts on the new line of MacBook Pros are really mixed. On one hand, I'm very proud of Apple for putting quad-core chips in their 13-inch laptops making this amount of power affordable. On the other hand, I'm still very disappointed. Apple's entry-level 13-inch model is $1299, yet it only gives you a dual-core 7th generation i5. That's the 
last generation of Intel chips. It also only comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. That's insane for 2018. Come on, Apple, you really need to learn that 128 gigabytes does not fly in the year 2018. I should note that some of the reviewers who've had the chance to try out the 15-inch highest-end Core i9 MacBook Pro have stated that there are some serious throttling issues. The temperature of the MacBook Pro gets really, really hot. Cooling situation on MacBook Pros have never been good, and a Core i9 just makes it so much worse. I think that I would go for a 15 inch core i7 that does give you a hexacore i7 it's not that far off from the core i9 in terms of performance given the fact that you'd have to spend 300 dollars more on a core i9 and of course the throttling issues i would choose the core i7 model just to be safe that's gonna be it for this one guys i hope you like this video link some videos about this new macbook pro from other youtubers at the bottom please do like, subscribe, and comment about anything in this video that you wish to address. Until the next time, always remember, turn your tech on.